Hello, my beautiful buds. Welcome back to my channel, Sprouts with Joy. My name is Joy, and if you like to talk about plants, you're in the right place. Okay, wow. All right, so I had the realization a couple weeks ago that I posted my first YouTube video on this Sprouts with Joy channel on September 25th, 2021. So that's a whole year ago now. And that's so surreal to me. And obviously I, I did take like a six month hiatus in that period of time. So I've really only actively been making videos for like six months total. But I was, I went back and watched my first video. Obviously I was cringing a lot, but I do think that, you know, in that time frame, I feel like I've gotten a lot more comfortable just talking to you guys in the camera and confident in editing and my style and all that stuff. So I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm, I feel really proud of myself, even though I did miss a lot of the year, but I thought it might be fun. So that video was a houseplant haul, like a shopping and houseplant haul from Groovy Plants Ranch. And I thought it would be really fun to go back and look at the plants that I got and update you on how those plants are doing now, a whole year later. <laughs> so without further ado, I guess we can just jump right into the video. This is a Tradescantia, of course. Um, it's Tradescantia albiflora rainbow. But when I saw this on the website, I just kind of fell in love just with that foliage. Just, just look at that foliage. Um, and I pulled this one out and I was like, okay, that's a stunner. Just, oh my goodness. I cannot wait to give this guy a good home. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Definitely lots of cringe. <laughs> what is that lighting? One of those AirPods. I don't know, I was recording on my phone, so I thought that it might be nicer to have an AirPod in for the microphone, but I don't think it worked all that well. <laughs> but anyway, um, so the first plant that I talked about was the Tradescantia albiflora rainbow. So I will pull that up right now. This is what he looks like today. Um, definitely is trailing a lot more, although I will say, He's had pretty classic Tradescantia issues with crispy leaves and sort of a, a bald top. And you know, some of these leaves in here are like not great. So I need to go through and pick them. But on the whole, I'm fairly proud of, of where this plant is at. I, I do think that it's really pretty still. The foliage, obviously super stunning. Um, I think that I could do better by this plant and there has been a lot of trial and error. I think that Tradescantia in general maybe don't like to dry out quite as much as some of our other plants that we typically have, like our aeroids like philodendron and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, there's been some experimentation and I do think that they appreciate a lot higher light. So I do have this in my guest bedroom, which has one south facing window and one west facing window. And he's not right up by the window, but a lot of light comes in and hits him for a fair amount of the day. So I think that he has been happy there since I moved him there. And yeah, on the whole, I'm honestly fairly pleased that he's even still alive because we went through a few rough patches there, as you can see from that. <laughs> you know, I could do more. I could try to chop and prop him a bit and make him more full, but for now I'm pretty happy with where he's at. And this one is a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen, as you probably know. Um, I have a Crimson Princess already. They had some six inch pots that were significantly more expensive, like maybe $10 more than this, I think four inch pot it looks like. And I know it's going to grow eventually. So I haven't decided yet if I want it to be hanging or if I want to put a trellis on it, but either way, it's hopefully gonna thrive. I'll put it in a very sunny window. All right, next is my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. Oh, such a freaking beauty. She, okay, so honestly, she's grown quite a bit. Like I think from like here, this whole tendril, um, big parts of this tendril and like this bit too, like she's grown a fair amount in a year. Um, it did take her mm, a while <laughs> to get started. 
But once she started growing, she's just, she hasn't really stopped once she started. She's got some new growth coming in right here. And some more, let's see, she pretty much always has some something coming in, which is kind of nice. So she's beautiful. I love the, the pinkish tint to the leaves that happen as, sh as they come in. Just, ugh, the coloring on this plant is just so beautiful and majestic. Um, she is still in the same pot that I bought her in, same for the Tradescantia. Although she's definitely, so right now she's in a, in a cover pot with the plastic pot right here. And honestly, um, the, the soil is getting a bit compacted. So I'm going to need to repot her soon. But I currently have her hanging in a south window with a lot of other Hoya. And they all really like it there. So I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with how much she's grown. And I think I am going to just have her trailing and honestly i cannot wait for the day that she decides to grace me with blooms oh my gosh but that day has not yet come i'm just honestly checking to see if i missed any peduncles or something but i don't think so no someday someday i swear it will happen pretty good growth for a year especially considering that i think this was my second hoya ever maybe i think i had a yeah i had a crimson princess before this but all that considered, I feel like she's done pretty well. This little guy uh, will be the first ever begonia that I add to my collection. Uh, it's a begonia aerial. Uh, now, I really do want a begonia maculata, maculata is that how you say it, I think, the polka dot one. Um, I do want one of those, um, but I saw this guy there, not that one. Um, I knew that I wanted a cane begonia instead of a rex begonia just because I prefer the look of them. Um, but just, I picked this one out. It was just so pretty. We'll see if that can focus. All right, so next I talked about my begonia Ariel, which is still with us, <laughs> but uh, I think that he, uh, I could do better by this plant. So here he is. There's been some growth. He's been putting out some leaves, but a lot of them have crisped up and fallen off and stuff. Um, I found that he really, here, I'll, let, I'll give you a better look. He really did not do well in ambient humidity. I had him in ambient humidity for a while, and then I had him by a humidifier, and he still wasn't happy. And honestly, I think a big mistake that I made was planting him in this terracotta pot. Don't think he's a big fan. I think it dries out way too fast for him. So I thought it was really cute, but it was not a good idea. But you know, I was naive. This is my first begonia, you know, it's fine. So currently, so for the last few months, I've had him um, in my prop box, like my humidity prop box thing, and he's enjoyed it in there. He's put out lots of growth and stuff, but honestly, I feel like I need to cut him and propagate him and make him fuller and, and happier and definitely take him out of this pot. So yeah, he's on my to-do list of a plant to give a bit more pampering to. I mean, he's still really pretty, and he's got those beautiful red backs to him, too. And honestly, I have been thinking about making a terrarium. So, I don't know, I might, I might make a terrarium and just put some begonias in there. Like, my local nursery recently got begonia amphioxus, so I wanna get that. And maybe I'll put a couple cuttings of this guy in there, too, because he definitely definitely likes higher humidity. I was expecting him to be more cooperative with ambient humidity because, you know, cane begonias are usually more okay with that. Uh, at least from what I had heard at the time and everything. And honestly, my begonia maculata whitey eye thriving in like 40 to 50% humidity, just going absolutely nuts. I, I still have to do some experimentation, but I sort of have set this guy aside and forgotten about him. I I want, I want to do better. I want to do better. So there's that. He's still alive though, which is it's good. Let's preface this. I really like Syngonium, but I only have three green Syngonium. Um, so I was like, you know what? Let's, you know, go beyond the white butterfly and get a pink one. So they did have some pink splashes and another rarer pink variety that was like 60 bucks. But I was like, you know what? Honestly, this is a Neon Robusta. 
And I think it's, I mean, it doesn't have like the flex and splashes, but honestly, I really think that it's gorgeous nonetheless. I really do like this blushy pink. Um, I'm not a fan of hot pink per se, but pink in general, I mean, I think it's fun. It's a little splash of color to add to the green. Um, and this one even had some new growth coming in, which I thought was lovely. So I'm very excited. Again, I'm excited about all these plants. Oh my goodness. Okay, next is the Syngonium Neon Robusta. And so this plant has grown a fair amount. She, she's put out a lot of leaves, but she's also dropped a lot of leaves. She still has some really um, pretty pink leaves going on. Uh, but she's currently dealing with some mealybugs, so I just, I need to deal with that. And she's had some leaves that keep getting stuck Hence all of these like wonky damaged looking leaves. So maybe she wants more humidity. Maybe I just need to spray the leaves as they come out, stuff like that. So she's, she's still alive. She's still growing, but definitely she's not thriving as much as I would like her to. And a lot of her leaves too have um, lost some of that pink variegation. Like not lost, but you know, they just haven't come in quite as pink, but some of them have come in more pink um like this one recently so i don't know it's kind of a hit or miss i'm not sure if she wants more light or less light because i have her underneath a grow light but for a while it wasn't turning on so i think that that may have messed with her just a little bit <laughs> she's one of those plants that i just kind of let sit there and she's fine but i think Again, I could put a little bit more care into her, but I mean, right now she's got like three new leaves coming in and then a ton of these leaves that take forever to unfurl, which again, I think is just, it's probably a humidity thing. It might be a light thing uh, or a fertilization thing. I just have to go down the list and figure out what she needs, but on the whole, she's still doing pretty well, so. I'd say that's a win. So this next plant is another first for my collection, believe it or not. My first Aglaonema or Chinese Evergreen. Um, this one is specifically the Maria and it's a smaller pot of it, but it was pretty affordable, um, but beautiful. I know that these guys are pretty tolerant of wherever you wanna put them, be it low light or brighter light. Um, so yeah, I'll probably put it in a cute corner and it'll be a filler plant, but it's gonna be precious and spark joy, as they say. I, I like to see what plants are like, how they behave in different settings and, and see how they do in my home. Um, so yeah, I'm very curious to see how this one does. All right, so my Aglaonema Maria is still kicking and honestly has grown quite a bit. It took a while for her to start growing. I think she was still I think she was still like acclimating to my environment. So it just took her a while to put out growth. She's actually given me quite a few flowers, which a lot of them you can see like right here are dried up. So I need to just go through and cut them. Um, and there's a new leaf coming in right here. And on the whole, I mean, I didn't feel like she'd grown that much, but now that I'm looking at that video and looking at this, I mean, that's quite a few new leaves. I think that she's done really well. Super easy plant. I mean, she is an Aglaonema, so what do you expect? That's pretty typical that they're easy plants. And I think the foliage is just still really striking. I'm still a really big fan. I'm a big fan of those plants that could just kind of sit there content in the background and they're not necessarily show stoppers necessarily, but they're happy to kind of be in the background, be more green. Yeah, I'm, I like this plant a lot. And I actually, I still don't have any other Aglaonema in my collection after a whole year, which is kind of surprising to me, but I just haven't, I just haven't picked one up. I could see myself really enjoying some of the other Aglaonema varieties. I don't really like the ones that, firecracker ones or whatever, that have a bunch of red on the edges or anything like that. Like those are fine, but I'm not, I feel like I don't like them as much as I like the green ones and the Aglaonema chocolate I am drooling over and would love to get some on my wish list. So I could see myself getting a Silver Bay. I could see myself getting a few of the other Aglaonema varieties. But for now, this is my, Beautiful, beautiful Aglaonema Maria. 
I saved the best for last. I've got two more and they are by far the rarest of the haul today. So this is a Monstera Peru. Um, I chose her because she's got some new growth coming in. Look at that. And then another leaf is, she's pregnant as they say. See that? Oh my goodness. Just delicious. So <laughs> that's such a weird thing to say, but I don't know. I'm excited. I think I'm going to put some sort of a moss pole or piece of wood or something in this pot. I'll let her acclimate for a while. Um, honestly, like this soil there is a pretty nice chunky aeroid mix. Oh so, yeah, this guy was only about $25, which is definitely pricier than a lot of the other plants. <laughs> I've just been having this in front of my face this whole time. Oh my gosh, my little Monstera Peru is such a baby. <laughs> Um, I definitely expected her to grow a lot slower based on what I had seen online, but this is her. Oh my gosh. Okay. She's very unstable. I definitely need to, um, I definitely need to add some more soil to this pot and generally make it better and more stable right now. This moss pole is like leaning up against the wall. I potted it up that way because I was afraid of root rot because this pot, like I needed this big of a pot for the moss pole but plant was not ready for the size of a pot so i added less soil which i think worked fine but i think we're at the point that i could definitely add some more soil so here she is i can't even really fit the whole thing in the frame but she's actually she has already reached the top of the moss pole but i recently cut off like three or four nodes and i have a bunch of little monster peru cuttings rooting up right now so Honestly, she has been super consistent for me. Um, she doesn't put out new leaves all the time. Like since I cut her, she's kind of been taking a break, I think. Um, but my goodness, I just love, now that I'm just like seeing her in the viewfinder in the camera, like <laughs> these leaves are just so freaking cool. I, I'm a big fan of Monstera Peru. Yeah, I haven't had any issues with her like at all with root rot, with, she has not lost any leaves at all, period. I will, some of the leaves like started getting really big going up the moss pole, but then some of them kind of slowed down like this, this leaf right here at the top is pretty small. So I haven't really been able to keep this moss pole super consistently moist or anything like that so she sort of attached in one place i think like right around here like she's definitely got a root in there but for the rest of it she hasn't really but i do think that she appreciates having the stability to climb she's been really easy for me she is in that room with the west window and the south window she's not right up by the window but she got she does get quite a bit of bright and direct light so i think she's very happy with that and yeah my monstera peru beautiful Mwah. let's give you another look at these leaves real fast before i move on look at that she's got some dust so don't mind that but they're like reptilian they're so cool it looks like little turtles or something here's the last plant and by far the one that i am most excited for <laughs> can you see that i already mentioned earlier I love Syngonium, and this is my first ever Syngonium Albo, Variegata. Oh my goodness. She was $60. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I know it's not, it's not nearly as expensive as some of the other plants there, so I felt okay about spending it, especially because she's been on my wish list for a year. I think it was definitely the best one there. There were some larger ones, but you know, their leaves were damaged or they had all white leaves or some variegation was lost. But this one, all of the leaves, I mean, it's smaller, but all of the leaves are perfect in my opinion. Just wow. Look at that. Look at that. I just love the just marbled look on them. This one has more sectoral variegation. I really hope that she does well in my care. Okay, so my Syngonium Albo. Honestly, I'm fairly happy with where she's at today. She's still alive, um, thankfully. <laughs> I was kind of really nervous. She's gotten spider mites 
once, but after one round of good treatment, she's fine. And she has lost quite a few leaves, but she's also gained quite a few leaves. But, so here, I'm gonna show you the mother plant, but I'm just gonna caveat it with saying that I, like a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago at this point, I took a bunch of cuts and chopped her down and I'm gonna get a plank for her or like a wooden pole or something and have her climb up. So this is the mama plant. Obviously it doesn't look like very much because I just chopped her. A lot of these leaves are like lower leaves that are old that maybe my cat took a little um, nibble out of as you can see. So these leaves are very old very fragile, um, but she already started developing her new growth point right there within just a few days. I'm getting out of breath. Oh my gosh, I don't have lungs anymore. They're gone. <laughs> but I wanted to, so I have two cuttings in sphagnum moss and then I've got one in water. Well, it's two cuttings in water, but they're in the same jar. So I did want to show you what the cuttings look like because they're so pretty and I'm really happy with how they're progressing. So right here is the first top cut from one of the plants. So this beautiful half moon. And this one has a lot of white on it. Um, and this new leaf that's coming in. I don't know how well, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see her because it is really hard to get a good angle. See that tiny little speck? Yeah, that's, that leaf also looks like it's gonna be a lot of white, so we'll see. But yeah, the roots are going absolutely crazy already. I kind of showed you guys on a recent video of mine too. Look at that root that's going on right there. There's another root right around here. These grow so fast. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> and then this, this other one has another leaf that's coming in. And right here, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And again, same situation, lots and lots of roots. So I'm, I think I'm gonna be able to pot them up together really soon. And hopefully, I mean, then I'll have a much fuller plant, lots more growth points to work with. And on the whole, yeah, I'm really, really excited with how it's going. There were some periods of time where I was a little bit discouraged with this plant because I felt like she would drop a leaf and then, you know, grow a leaf. So it was just sort of like, oh, I'm losing a leaf and getting a leaf tango where I'm not really growing all that much and I'm just getting kind of leggy, which is part of the reason that I chopped her up. But I'm really, really excited to kind of start over with this plant and make it more fun and full. Yes, Jenny? My cat sees some birds outside and she's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Well, that, those are all my plants. And so I didn't really know what to expect, but I mean, I, they're all still alive. Not all of them are totally thriving, but they're all still alive, which is I think a pretty good accomplishment. So I'm fairly proud of that. I'm fairly happy, like looking at how much they've grown. It's honestly, it's really cool having a YouTube channel and having these videos where I'm documenting my plant journey. And that way I can see my plant progress from years past. And I just, I think it's really, really cool and really awesome. So I don't know. Thank you guys so much for joining me in this whole planty business. I mean, you certainly didn't have to, but there's like almost 600 of you, which considering that I took a very long hiatus, I think that's pretty dang awesome. Um, and you guys just bless my heart so much. I think honestly, if you, even if you guys weren't here, it would still be fun to be tracking my plant journey via like video diaries kind of, but I do think it's a lot better that you are here. So I'm not just speaking into the void and I can actually interact with a really awesome community of people that are loving and sweet and give good advice and all that stuff. So yeah, thank you so much you guys for acting along during this pretty fun year. So yeah, I hope that you have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye-bye.